G'day, this is Captain Uber, and welcome to my new Fallout 76 weapon series, and this is an experimental, so I'm looking for feedback going forward to see if this is something that is actually fun to watch and such, but this is called Murmur's Lucky Dip, and the thing is, what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to go up to Murmur, and we are going to get precisely one ranged weapon of the three-star variety, um, sometimes we'll do it with melee weapons if I want to, but there's also a discount going on now, but I'm not going to fill up my script in time to make advantage of this, so we're going to be using Murmur in other ways. So I'm going to be getting one unit, one package of legendary ranged weapons, and then we are trying to make it work with whatever character I think would make it work best. This means that... 98% chance of getting something totally unusable in script wear that I will never be wanting to use under normal circumstances, but maybe we'll find us some challenge and maybe we'll find some diamonds in the rough. We'll have to see how we go. Today's role is... A Mutant Slayer's Broadsider. With Vats, Criticals, and Agility. Hmm. Okay, then. So, a lot of the prefixes that we'll get, we will roll these really, really bad and lame ones. This thing's not going to be working against anything except for Super Mutants, which are not... They're kind of tough enemies, but I don't think they're much of an issue enough to really deal with them. Like, wanting to get a prefix to deal with them that way, because, you know, they're big, dumb idiots who... Uh, they've got big hitboxes, right? So, they're not exactly easy to miss. Luckily, we've got Vats Criticals doing more damage and a bit of agility, so we could lend this one a little bit to use in Vats when using these new launch weapons post the patch where they fix the breaking of these things in two shots, then we might be okay. Although, I think last patch, they messed up with that a little bit, so if we're back to classic old broadside, this video might be over very, very soon indeed. So let's chuck this one on Miranda, and then we'll get to uh, modifying it, I suppose, and then putting the build together. Okay, so here's the broadsider on Miranda now, call sign Marauder, and now we're going to modify this thing. So we'll chuck on the light barrel, that'll give us a little bit of extra accuracy as well as reduce the weight, but it will decrease the damage, so do we want to do that? I think we want to take all the damage we can get. The extra accuracy and weight reduction would be nice, but whatever, we'll actually end up wasting a little bit of resources there. We'll get the comfort grip, because this one doesn't screw us over in any super meaningful way. It does add to the weight, but it's a heavy gun anyway, so it's fine. And we'll also be grabbing the multi-shot canister. It'll reduce our accuracy and increase our weight even more, but for better sustained DPS, that has to be the pick here. It's unfortunate that I can't get the light barrel. It used to never actually give you a damage penalty, but now it does. And it's not worth having, I don't think. So there we go. There's the weapon. Now let's quickly throw a build together. Now in strength, I probably want to grab things that will help me out. This, since this is an explosive launcher type weapon, chucking on those perks, heavy gunner, not going to be a thing. We could grab Ordnance Express, just ignore that the Super Mutants are shooting my house again. He will be dealt with swiftly and painfully soon enough. We're going to be grabbing, first of all, Pre Barbarian. I am aiming to do this in a way that will allow me to maximize my use in VATS as much as possible. Don't need to grab Ordnance Express because the weight is covered by a bandolier. Uh, we'll grab Lock and Load so we can... Uh, reload a little bit faster, and if you are listening to the uh, Super Mutant Fire missiles at me, he just missed my house, so that's good. We'll grab Basher as well, I suppose. That'll be good for when we are um, up close and personal and don't want to blow ourselves up, and we might cripple them. And we're going to grab Blocker as well, so anything too close and punches us won't do as much damage. We're going to grab Concentrated Fire. We're also going to get Glow Side at rank 2. At rank 3, sorry. And then we're going to get Grenadier. I don't actually know if that works. People say, oh, it's only for grenades. But I'm going to hope that Bethesda have got their uh, semantics here working right. And it actually works for explosive launches. We're going to grab Fireproof. And also, uh, probably Life Giver. Just for a little bit of extra health. Because I'll need it. Fireproof is there to resist explosions. We'll grab... Over here, we've got Suppressor and Tenderizer just to add a little bit more damage and a little bit of extra follow-up damage if we want to do that. We'll get Demolition Expert to boost our damage. We've got a bunch of points left over, so we can chuck five in Gunsmith right now. And there's nothing here that is immediately jumping out to me, except for Nerd Rage, of course. So I'm going to shit that in and then move Gunsmith over as well. 
And in agility, we'll go for something like... I'm feeling like evasive will be useful. Gun through might be helpful a little bit. We might have to remove that later on. Um, I'm thinking moving target just to get as much tanking as possible. Or would I go dodgy? We'll definitely grab escape artist because that is like the one of the best things ever. Uh, adrenaline is a no-brainer here. And I'd love to maybe grab Enforcer, but we know we're not going to be doing anything against Scorch Beast. So... That's probably not a good idea. Sneak may not be necessary here because we're not going to be utilizing all that much. I think I'll just go three ranks of gun through. And in luck, what I might do here is, well, we've got a weapon that lends itself to getting criticals done very quickly. So what I might do is uh, try to utilize that as much as possible. So we'll grab critical savvy and then maybe better criticals just to get those criticals coming a little bit quicker and we can get grim reaper sprint if we can get an ap back whilst uh, shooting stuff that would be nice and that is the build doing 443 damage now which is not terrible um there's a little bit more we'll be doing here because i've got unyielding armor and i want to use this thing in as much in vats as possible so we'll be going down to nerd rage and increasing our stats from this to this yeah that's much better so a bunch more strength not that important but more importantly perception agility and luck goes up which is good and i think i've annoyed the gulpers i've annoyed something so with all of that now we are doing uh, 753 which i think is a lot better i really hope they didn't bugger up the uh condition with this thing i'd have to assume that they didn't maybe it's just legacies that they nerfed again lol so here we are outside of Shelbyville, and look, we're fighting a bunch of mutants, so I think maybe this one should go quite well, especially when we're hitting them for about half damage and then not hitting them again. Not too fun for me. All right, back into it, and we may have uh, slept on the uh, perks for survivability, or we may have just been playing it wrong and not targeting the legs like we should, because for some reason that does more. All right, we're throwing on some survival perks. Okay, Serendipity and Rip Ricochet go on, and hopefully that allows me to actually get some kills here. And you think putting all of those... Uh, all of those uh, perks like evasive and uh, be uh, not berserker, it's uh, it's it's barbarian and that stuff one would help me when it kind of really didn't. Maybe if I was at full health, I'd be surviving a lot better. But what can you do? All right, so we're not one-shotting these super mutants. So as far as I'm concerned, this thing's primary thing that you'd want it to do as a mutant slayer's weapon. Can't really do well against mutants compared to a bloodied one, so... I don't see the point in this thing. We'll press on. Uh, we've got 1019 damage, and hey, this thing breaks fast again. Wow, good to see them reverse the good stuff that they've done in the last patches and further muddy the goodwill that they gained out of such a fix, but whatever. Oh, we'll just keep going on. We might have to go back to base and repair this in between combat things but yeah it's very disappointing that we can't one shot these guys that one got the one shot treatment though and that one shot me behind a wall sometimes the fallout 76 likes to remind me of battlefield 4 probably should stim pack that might help me survive a little bit as well all right, so we won't go inside because this thing's already underwhelming. So I think we'll go and fight other things that aren't mutants, despite them being, you know... Well, it's not as effective. Even Murmur over here tanked five cannonballs, which is not great. All right. At least we got a Suppressor's Power Fist, right? That's helpful for something. Okay, perhaps in a crowd control situation, like against these ghouls, we may find a little bit more success when it comes to using this weapon. Come on, we need these one-shot kills, Broadsider. We really need you to lift here. Mm, total whiffer! 
Yeah, 95% misses. I mean, it's statistically possible, but it shouldn't be happening this often, right? That one got him. Looks like they end up doing more damage if they're standing up, which leads me to think that the game's like placing the explosions in a cooked spot. Yep, there she goes. <clears throat> Actually, I should say that like a pirate. There she blows. I'm going to go over here. That should give me enough time to whack an improved repair kit on this, and we can begin, or keep going even. It looks like when we're shooting them from up, down below, getting that death from above kills, and there's another 95% whiffer, um, well, it looks like we can do slightly better, but we're only really getting good damage if we hit him in the legs here, which I feel like is totally intended by the developers and the game is working properly. I just got the aim down sights bug. That's cool. Stop hitting me. Finally, we're making good use out of that blocker perk because these ghouls would have eaten my ass until my head caves in already if I didn't have that. I don't know what exactly launched me into that door, but I'm going to say wonky Bethesda physics and you all should accept that. Alright, got a couple more out here. Got radworms now and I killed myself despite having a dense chest piece and fireproof. So, yeah, the broadside is a bit weird. I think you can tank that if you're using an an auto grenade launcher. I don't know, this thing's a bit weird. Some might even say cooked. Alright, so we're gonna extend the combat ranges out a little bit here, and we might be able to utilize stealth, perhaps. Let's see how good my aim is without the assistance of that. Well, apparently it's good enough to hit them. It's a little bit hard to strike them with a cannonball that's not totally hit scan. That one hit in the chest and exploded. That's the kind of, you know, reaction I'd expect you to have if you hit by a cannonball. That's what happened to Homer Simpson in the deleted scene of that episode where he was like a stunt man with something or rather. So the alarm happened and it didn't really do much, so I'm just going to continue to snipe at these guys. There we go. Hit and center mass, doing pretty well here. We're not utilizing the uh, VATS thing for it there, but it doesn't look like we ever needed to. The Blood Eagles have a much lower health pool than a lot of the other things that I've been fighting thus far, so that's probably why they were so easy to take down. But there's Swan over there. We've got Mutant Slayer. We've got an anti-FEV enchantment on our cannonballs, apparently. I don't know how this thing works. Um, so we'll creep in, and we'll probably go for his leg. This thing has a magazine capacity of three. How many shots was that? I'll let you rewind and count that, because this thing is cooked in more ways than one, it would seem. Alright, so we are currently riding with the HMASS Marauder, and apparently we're sailing right over Davy Jones' locker, because the Kraken might be showing up in just a few seconds here. And we're actually running out of uh, ammunition here. Come on. That was four in a three-round magazine. There we go. Okay, that Milo King took a lot of killing to actually fell there. So, um, as awkward as this might be, we might have to, like, run away mid-combat and then come back with a full, full, uh, tank of, uh, bullets here. And we just got staggered by sound waves and then hit with damage over time. And then the game crashed. Hmm... Alright, back at it, and I've taken the time to uh, reload this thing and get myself a few rounds. Let's go round two, mate. This time you're not going to stagger me with sound waves, hopefully. We'll try to get some hits without using bats. He did it! He staggered me with sound waves again. That makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know, I'm not a, not a scientist, man. What I do know is this guy is amazingly tanky when it comes to using this on him. Also, if you miss a shot in VATS with this thing, like, the cannonball just fizzles out of existence like nothing happened. Like, it doesn't throw the, the cannonball over to something. Hey, look, it's the Kraken. I knew where they'd turn up. The Kraken has been released, and we're detected because, would you believe, this thing's loud. We're going to go for these this thing's legs and then hit him for 409. Is that damage over time I can feel? Well, that's not good. Oh, she's sending it. Yep, she wants to come in and punch me in the face. I guess it's there's not much else you can do. I think she just headbutted the the roof there. And 
As if you could walk on this pitch like it. Hey, look, the Blood Eagles getting distracted by crackheads. I'd really like to cripple that limb. It's not happening. This thing's gonna break again before I even defeat the Mylurk Queen. I, okay, well... We had trouble... Oh, okay! Whoa, what was that all about? Okay, this thing's bugged, and also we're actually having a realistically hard time scaling up a roof pitch of this... So apparently you can, like, you can use broken-ass broadsiders to fucking teleport where you shoot. You learn something new every day, don't you? So if we're not going to get any clear shots using vats, we'll just hit a... ...that, the use of vats, and that seems to be going okay. Um, can you spit up here? Uh, she can try. Oh, she's got it. Eh. I mean, it's good to know. It's gonna do a stim pack because I still think damage over time is a crock of shit. Alright, we'll go for some headshots here, maybe. Doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. I think if we hit him between her legs, giggity, that does the job. Well, that sucked, and we all know what this thing is against Scorch Beast, so um, it's gonna round up the last of the little babbies. Before they turn into Myla Queens themselves. This is immense overkill. I might just go and bash them. We put the basher perk on for a reason, right? Or is that one just going inside? No, nah, doesn't want a bar of this. Still, the little bastard's going to stop me from fast traveling, though, isn't he? So, it's annoying. We've got one over here. There we go. 51 damage to the head, which is a lot more than I got when the damage number showed up for actually being hit by a projectile. So, that's kind of weird, right? Okay, so I'm going to pick on a lone Scorch Beast, maybe, if it would like to spawn. If not, then I'm not super fussed. We could fight a bunch of Scorched Annihilators. Oh, wait. Oh, there you are. There's the Thumb Thumb. So, uh, what I could probably do here is switch to Enforcer, bring this thing to the ground, but I don't think it'll matter a whole lot anyway. Well, if you're going to do that, then, well, you don't have to sit through this. We'll wait till it lands. Alright, luckily enough for me, um, you don't know, we could just warp forward in time, it's fine. It's actually landed pretty quick, so we'll go for a stim pack here just to make sure we don't fucking die. No, we're targeting the wrong thing. As expected, it is in fact quite worthless still against a Scorch Beast, and this is why I didn't go out of my way to go and fight one of these things. I mean, I'm gonna test it because, you know, sometimes you gotta hold out hope that the Bethesda actually, you know, gets shit done and fixes stuff, but not in this case. I've seemed to have broken more things with this weapon recently, so, you know, it's back as one of the most cursed weapons, but again, we've got a pretty shit roll for it, so... You know, I think we can give this one its final verdict now. How about a joke? What do you get when you cross a Fallout 76 player base with a developer that abandons them and treats them like trash? I'll tell you what you get. You get what you fucking deserve. And I think I'll end the video there. Since I don't have the weapon to look at, we're just going to stare at Marauder just kind of standing there doing nothing. Yeah, you wiped the sweat off your brow. I bet you that one worked up a sweat, right? So the Broadsider, I don't think is an inher inherently terrible weapon. It was better when it didn't break every 20 shots. So if you could fix that one, Bethesda, that would be nice. Um, the the problem this this thing is our, our uh, prefix on this didn't give us any utility whatsoever. And the secondary and tertiary legendary effects, whilst they lended themselves pretty good to VAT, we couldn't really utilize that a lot of the time because this weapon would just be so inconsistent. Even when I've got all of my stats jacked up to the maximum without using ridiculous stuff like chem. So it's a little bit of a write-off and you saw what <laughs> became of it. It's a thing that you'd script without thinking about and that's for a reason. Now I do know that they are buffing these legendary perks in the next patch because they want to bring about balance to the wasteland but I don't mind them buffing these types of things but when they are doing this there's a word that comes to mind. It starts with a V. It's called versatility. What versatility does a mutant slayer give you? Well it gives you extra damage. 
but only on super mutants. So it's situational, right? Not very versatile. Whereas there's perks like Bloodied, which all you have to do to gain a little of extra damage is be at low health. Junkies, more manageable. You can be at full health, just have five addictions, take some random hits to your stats, and get the damage across everything. So Bethesda going along and tweaking up all of these little things, making uh, Nocturnal a little bit more powerful and less penalizing, people still aren't going to use it because Nocturnal, during the day, it's worthless, it's useless. Instigating, that works against enemies that are full health. Guess what health you'll be encountering most enemies if no one else is fighting them first. Full health, more utility. Bloodied, again, more utility. So the versatility of these legendary effects is really what makes it, you know, makes them useful. And if they want to offset it by making it extremely powerful for that versatility, that's probably the way to do it. The way to make it interesting to make players go, okay, it's night now. Look at the time. Look at the sky. It's night. It's dark. Let's grab our nocturnal weapons now because they'll be better now. And then maybe you'll have better options there. You'll have more interesting options rather than bringing up a little bit to be on par because honestly, the the versatility, the utility value is really nothing. So yeah, changing these numbers, not good enough. We're going to have to overhaul the system entirely to make other things more useful. That's my two cents and unnecessary part of the video. If you agree with me, please uh, agree with me. I don't know, say something cool in the comments. Um, say good job, Marauder, in the comments if you've made it this far, and then you'll earn a love heart from me. Thank you very much for watching, guys.